One of the major new question types that the new SAT has introduced is the two-part or the evidence questions, where in the first question you'll have to answer something about the passage. Sometimes it even has a line reference, but a lot of times it doesn't. You just have to find the portion of the passage that gives you the answer. And then the follow-up question, the one that follows immediately after, it looks like this, and it says, which choice provides the best evidence for the answer to the previous question? And then you've got some lines that you have to look and see which one best supports your answer to the previous problem. So the best way to do these questions, as you've seen me do them in the passage one, in the uh, test one, is do the previous question on its own, search through the text, hopefully you find it as you read for other questions, but if you don't, you just have to read through the passage as you work through the questions, and see if you can find the answer yourself in the passage, right? You answer that question, in this case, number 13, and then hopefully this, the lines that you found that gave you the answer to 13 will be the exact same lines that are in one of these choices, and then that's great because you found the answer to the question. This question acts basically as confirmation that you did it right, and you're all good. right? That's the ideal, and hopefully that's what you'll do in most cases. Now, sometimes it's not perfect. Maybe on 13 you looked through the passage and you just were confused or you couldn't find the answer or something. So what you want to do in that case is kind of do both of them at the same time. And what you should do is use what I call the bracket technique. And this is how it works. You go to the question in the two-part question, right, 14 in this case. You see that the answer is going to be somewhere between, at the beginning, line 10, all the way to 47. So what I'm going to do is bracket, put brackets from 10 to 47. Then I'm going to reread the passage paying special attention to these lines because the answer's got to be somewhere in here, right? Given that I have these uh, these, refer these lines in the choices, one of these choices has got to be right, so my answer's got to be somewhere in here. So I kind of read this, and I do 13 and 14 at the same time. That's kind of the backup strategy if you're having trouble finding the answer to both of the questions. So worst comes to worst, you do them both at the same time. Best case scenario, you find the answer to 13, and then in finding the answer to 13, you also find the answer to 14. What I do not recommend is simply reading the cited lines in the part two question to help you find the answer to the first part. So what you don't want to do, at least when you're trying to find the answer in the first place, is say, okay, lines 10 to 13, let me underline those. Let me read those, let me read those out of context and see if it helps me answer 13. Oh, no, it didn't. Okay, let me go to 22 to 23. Let me read these and see if it makes sense. Because the problem with this, two things. Number one, you're reading out of context. You're just reading these lines, and you're not reading the entire paragraph around it to get a sense of where these lines fit in the argument, the context, things like that. The second issue is you're much more likely to fall into traps if you do it this way. Because they're going to have, if this is question 13, A, B, C, D, Let's say, I forgot what the answer to this one was. We did this one in the uh, part in the passage videos we just looked at. Let's say the answer to this was B, and B went with C, or something like that. They're also going to have one or two of these choices here, these trap choices in 13, link up with the lines in 14, right? So maybe A and D go together, but that's wrong. And then maybe, I don't know, D and B link together, but that's wrong. Let's just say. So if you're looking directly at these references and you try to match them up with choices in 13 out of context, you're just much more likely to get sucked into A and D and then get D and then get 13 wrong as a result, right? They kind of, these kind of correlate together. They go together. If you get one wrong, you're probably going to get the other wrong and vice versa. So what you want to do instead is use one of these two strategies. You don't really want to go and read the choices out of context. A few other points. In addition, make sure that the cited lines actually directly speak to the answer to the previous question. Simply being tangentially related is not enough. So we saw this on one of the previous questions where I believe it was about the uh, in the women's rights passage where one of the choices the, in the part two question seemed like it kind of fit, but it didn't speak directly to what the question was asking about, right? It didn't speak to the specific issue that that previous question had discussed, even though it was kind of sort of related. So you wanna be careful with those because those are really, really tricky. In addition, you want to make sure that that cited line isn't part of a bigger argument that you might say, oh, well, you know, those lines don't really fit, but those lines are part of a paragraph, which makes the point that I made in the previous question. So maybe I'll pick 
C for that reason. No, because you need the answer to be in the sighted lines. Again, not around the sighted lines. We talked about this in the trap choices. Always check all four choices to verify your answer. So once you've picked, let's say in this question, B as the answer, you can then go to A, C, and D, find those lines, and just double check, even out of context is okay, just double check that there's no chance that they could work. Uh, if you see, oh wait, maybe D can work, then you need to go back and do a little bit more reading to, to double check. But you do want to check all four choices just as a way uh, to avoid running into issues. And this is true of any reading question, really. You always want to check all four choices. Finally, practice makes perfect. Per practice makes perfect. I will admit that since this test is super new, I myself am still getting my head around the way these two-part questions link with the previous question. In other words, what standards of evidence do the College Board consider uh, valid to, to link the two questions together, right? And I think, not only am I figuring this out, but I think the College Board is frankly trying to figure this out. They themselves are a little bit uncertain, I feel, on some of the questions about this link. So by the time you take the real test, this would be figured out, hopefully, and we'll have more practice questions, hopefully, to uh, work through this ourselves. Anyway, that's it for the two-part questions. We'll be working through a bunch more of these in the future passages, so keep that in mind, and let's move on to the next video.